Hello, and welcome to this episode of the Five Journeys podcast, Live Like You Matter. I'm Dr. Wendy Trubo. My co-host is Dr. Ed Levitan. He's the serious one, obviously. Our guest today is Patrick Porter. He is an award-winning author, educator, consultant, entrepreneur, and speaker. His newest brain training platform called BrainTap is distinctively designed to activate the brain's neuroplasticity to help people like you achieve brain fitness, overcome stress, lose weight, stop smoking, manage pain, and make a huge range of lifestyle improvements. And he's an author. So first off, Patrick, welcome. Tell us about your book. Well, thank you. Yeah, I've written nine books. The the one that uh, my most recent is called Thrive and Overdrive because uh, it's how to live your overloaded lifestyle. So here we are in in a world where everybody wants everything now, and you know nobody takes a break. Our nervous system is engaged all the time in this high sympathetic experience, and and I, I'm just showing that we need periods of rest, recovery, relaxation. I give a lot of tips throughout the book that aren't just about my technology brain tap, but maybe we'll talk. About about those on the call too, because there's there's a lot of things you can be doing. Of course, a lot of people want the easy way: just press play and you're uh, you're relaxing. But you know, it's all about our lifestyle. We're we're digitally we kind of have a digital mentality now. We want it free. We want it fast. You know, Amazon kind of changed the way we think about even delivery of things and they sped up our world, but we still need to have that community. We need to have, you know, when you look at the blue zone studies and how people live longer and and are more are healthier, I should say, the, you know, we need to get back to some of the things that we we've lost along this journey. So how'd you get into this? Cause can you give a little background of, give us a little background? Cause sure. sure. Yeah. I was blessed to be the son of an alcoholic, you know, when I was 12 <laughs> years old, I was celebrating that. No, the, uh, yeah, what, yeah. what happened was my, my dad was a chronic alcoholic and I was a real troublemaker. So I tell the whole story in my first book, awaken the genius where I went from being held back in second grade to uh, being an honor roll student, three sport athlete, getting college scholarship. And this all happened because my dad got help with something called the Silva method, which is a meditation practice. And so from the time I was 12 till now, um, I've been practicing some form of mindfulness. We didn't call it that then. Nobody knew that term uh, back in the 70s. But what we did was uh, my dad got help with his alcoholism. Once he realized that he wasn't drinking to get drunk, like a lot of people think, he was drinking to get balanced. And it didn't work. You know, obviously, he he would go off the rails. So once he did that, and then for me, he he taught me to use it for sports. He didn't teach me to use it for school, but what happened was because the brain generalizes any improvement, it, it generalized my improvement in sports into the classroom and I became this smart kid. I don't know what happened. I mean, I went from being this daydreamer artist. I, w- I had art scholarships when I was younger and, you know, just being creative. And then uh, what got me in a little bit further after that, because they used sound in the Silva method. So our brain hears 25,000 pieces of information every second. And but we only act on about 40 of those. And so it's always omitting things. So we need what Silva did was he used a sound that actually got a in neuroscience, it would be a cortical response in the brain, where it would basically your brain tracks it. Science is called frequency following response. So I got really interested in that sound. But then in the in the 80s, I joined a group called Light and Sound Research. And I was very fortunate. There's a whole story behind that that we don't have time to go into now. But the um, basically, I helped to build the first portable light and sound machine because of the prototype that we were building for a big clinical model was so easy to build and we needed money as a company. So we started selling those and it took off uh, of course, we were ahead of our time. This was before cell phones and CDs and downloads. So we look like an alien coming to the planet. But now every I, I love it when people go, wow, this is great. Where did you, when did you start? Well, it's had a lot of evolutions. This is my 16th device that I've invented. And we finally put it all into one package. And I really did it for myself first. I needed the help myself. And then, you know, so I, I'm on a mission to better a billion brains now because I've already bettered more than a million. And that was my first, you know, at time, that was my big, my big ask of the universe. And now it's, it's, it's bigger. Well, that's pretty cool. That so, is really cool. So I have to uh, say that we learned about we were at a conference, what, three, four years ago, yeah, and experienced uh, brain tap, and we loved it from the first time. And it took us a long time to um, kind of 
act act on it we 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 had to go through all the phases you know the contemplation the pre-contemplation the and then we finally got to action about what three months ago three yeah two months ago and so we and it took a while to get everything settled but we're i'm using it probably every other day um consistently may i don't want to say every day but it's made a difference and what's interesting um that I find like pretty for profound is I gave it to my kid, our kids once, uh, the younger two, and they actually ask for it. That that's the really cool thing. It's not like we're forcing something on them. They're actually asking for it. Oh, can we do that again? Right. It was, it was really interesting. We were, we were at a, at a show where we were at an amusement park kind of environment. It was a water indoor water park up in Wisconsin. And the person next to us in the booth, she was, she was selling something and her kids were there and they would come over and do the brain tap. And she asked her kids, what was the most fun at the water park? And she said, the brain tap. Right. <laughs> so it was like, what? And that was a free ride, right? That wasn't a, <laughs> they didn't pay for that. So kids love it because kids want to feel good too. You know, most people don't think about it, but kids have stress. And when the nervous system is under stress, we want to get relief. And unfortunately, in the past, people have sought out destructive ways to do that. Of course, there's always ways like exercise, eating healthy, breathing techniques, things like that. But kids don't know those techniques. They just know that they feel, they don't feel good. And as soon as their brain is liberated from that stress, they go, wow. And, and we have parents tell us that all the time. They go, especially autistic uh uh, parents of autistic children, because the first thing they say is, "My kids, no way that ki my kid's going to wear that, those flashing lights, and what's going on." I said, "Well, just give them a minute, and within a minute they're passed out, right?" And then they come back in ten minutes, and their parents go, "What just happened?" I go, "Well, we just downregulated their nervous system, and they're learning how to." That's where the neuroplasticity comes in when the brain is dysregulated. It doesn't know how to relax. It just It's like having the gas and the brake pressed at the same time. The nervous system doesn't know what to do. So we're, we're liberating that part of the brain. All right. So then I have, so let me actually, I, I, I got this because I use it, but this <laughs> is not the one I use. This is the one in the office because we're going to be using this for patients with IV, uh, with our IV patients. Um, it's playing the technology because let me see. Can we back up before we go into like how does the technology work? Can we talk about why this matters. Like, let's talk. Let's take a few steps oh, back. Come on, come flashing back lights. That, swing them back. Come on. All right, but fine. We should talk about. You know, you touched on it, but I really want to go to the start. Brain fitness. Why does it matter? Why is it important? What does it do? Well, for what us? is it? Well, True. first of all, yeah. When we think about our brains, we all agree that we want to grow old and have our memories. The biggest fear in the world right now is the fear of losing our memories or losing our capacity to think and being a burden to our family. So how do we take care of that? Now, this isn't true in ancient times, right? Ancient traditions would give all the wisdom of the tribe to the elders. They didn't give it to the young people that had the young brains. So something's happened in our life over the last 30 years that's causing our brain. Because back in the, in the 1960s and 70s, there really wasn't Alzheimer's. There was a few people that got it, but nothing like the onslaught that's happening right now. There so also there's wasn't company. glyphosate and metals yes. and pesticides and toxins. Don't get her started. Don't Do get her started. Get me started yes. right? So those are all very true. And I think it starts with one key thing that most people don't get two thirds of America right now is not sleeping well. And that's so what happens during sleep that most people don't realize, and they just proved this in 2015. Before 2015, there isn't a physio physiology workbook out there or textbook that has the lymph system going beyond the neck. Now, we now know that during level four sleep, the brain opens up another system of the brain called the glialymphomic system which is how the brain detoxes. So if you're not sleeping because of high levels of stress or all those other things you mentioned, because the body is, is basically, there's so many toxins in the world right now, from environmental toxins, like you're talking about, to even quantum toxins like EMF, you know, things like that. All of these things are causing our body, and really it's what they call the cell danger response. Every cell is really like an individual. It has a life cycle. And then it works together as a community, makes our body. So if our cells are in a fear or a cell danger response, that means it shuts down the flow of energy. 
So that energy can come in the form of oxygen. It can come in the form of nutrients. It can come in the form of whatever. But when you're under stress, that flow stops. So what really matters right now is to get people sleeping, to really get their hippocampus. This is what's happening to people, especially as we get better looking and more intelligent with age. There's something that happens to our brain, right? Our brain, it will start to shut down because it's an energy hog. So if if it has to deal with all these toxins, it's not going to have time to be creative. It's not going to have time to relax you because the minute you sit down to relax or you lay down, the brain goes, wow, now we can start detoxing. So it goes to work because the other time it's doing, while you're doing everything you need to do, balancing your checkbook, taking care of clients, whatever you're doing, your body's got to do everything it does. And people take it for granted. So what's happened over the last really 40 years is we continue, you know, when, when somebody told me we're going to have computers, you know, there's not going to be any more paper. This was in the seventies. Well, I can tell you right now, there's more paper being, because what people do is they have it on their computer, then they print it out. You know, so we didn't really get rid of paper. It caused more, more problems. So what happened now, I used to be able to lock my door on Friday at my office, go home, and I'd come down Monday morning and listen to the voicemails. Not anymore. No matter where you're at around the world, if you've got Dr. Porter's cell phone <laughs> and you're in Europe, I should be up taking your call. You know, or they text, you know, or they email. I mean, we all this stress that we're in right now, it was our creation. And a lot of it's really good. I mean, I, I don't think I'd want to go back. You know, I don't think it would happen. But, you know, there's a lot of movies showing that, right? What would happen? But the, the reality is that we need balance is what we need. I think all of these things are good, but we need downtime as well as uptime. And I think the main reason from children I mean, they've taken exercise out of the schools. How ridiculous is this? The, we need the kinetic energy that people build up throughout the day. Think of your body like a capacitor in a circuit. A capacitor is meant to hold a charge and then it discharges. Well, every cell of your body does the same thing. It holds a charge and then it discharges. Now, when you're under stress, we hold the charge, we hold the charge, we hold the charge. It never gets to discharge. So people are looking at negative things like alcohol, drugs, or abusive relationships, or whatever's going on, and that's how they get their release, and that's not healthy. So we need a healthy way, and the reason we, we call it brain fitness, so think in terms of your nervous system. A lot of people think the nervous system is the spine, and because chiropractors will show pictures of the spine and things like that, your nervous system is your brain. 70% of your nervous system is between your ears. So when we're talking about your brain, we're really talking about your whole nervous system. How do we get this nervous system to function? And we should be regulating it through our sympathetic, which is our fight or flight response, to our parasympathetic, which is our rest, digest, and recover, to our neurohormonal response, which is our biological system. But we've been, we've been conditioned now. We've kind of swung the pendulum the other way. We now think everything we need comes in a pill, bottle, or a potion. The reality is that most of everything we need is free. You know, you don't really need brain tap, but you have to commit to the time, the energy, the effort to do the things. So that's why we need something like brain tap right now. So how does it work to retrain the brain to help with sleep? Well, the main thing is that when you're when you're in high sympathetic, we call it, there's a neurological condition people get stuck in. So they go to sleep and their brain is not able to change. So what we do is we use light, sound, and vibration, which are natural to the brain. Everything that we interpret as tables, chairs, lights, other people, these are not real. 99.999 to the 14th power are empty. It's space. So, but our brain interprets it, whether it's a light spectrum, a sound spectrum, a vibratory frequency, our brain is interpreting our reality. To give you an example, our eyes take in 2,000 pieces of information every moment while we're, our eyes are open. But our brain feeds from our eyes to our brain, we get 10 million pieces of information every second. So we're making this up. In fact, I'll give you an example how we do this. We render up to 80% of our reality. It's not that it's not there. It's just we render it because it, it's happening so fast. So let's say that you're in the kitchen and you're looking for the ketchup and you know it's somewhere and your spouse tells you it's in the refrigerator. So you open up the refrigerator and you say, no, it isn't. It's not here. 
And then they come up from the table and they're a little huffy and they, they it's right there in front of you. I mean, it was that great never there. happens. Just say no. <laughs> yeah. That never ever happens. I just want to be really clear. Well, for the record, we don't have ketchup in our house. Yeah. Yeah. For the record, I, we don't actually have ketchup in our house. However, I just realized everything that else. Happened. However, the word "it" as it pertains to anything that someone other than me is looking for happens yeah. every day. Patrick. Right. So, yeah. so let's slow down a little bit. So, so you're saying. You don't really need brain tap. You could do this on your own. However, it's a commitment and you have to figure it out. So you've put it into a neatly packaged system that provides the light, the sound, and the, what was the third thing? Vibration. Vibration. And so tell me, tell me what the brain needs because a million people listening to this need to fix their sleep. So what, how does this fix their sleep? Well, believe it or not, your brain needs energy to sleep. It doesn't, it doesn't need energy in the form of sugar or, you know, these negative things that people think it needs. Your brain, the most underprescribed nutrient on earth is light because we live in homes, we drive in cars, we're not getting, and our cells respond to light. And, for, and to give an example, if we go to sleep before 12 o'clock at night, we're make every hour before 12 makes twice as much melatonin as after 12. So this is, so our body needs this light to do it. So it needs light. It also needs the right environment. So in ancient times, we would be outside. Maybe we would have a fire before we'd go to sleep. That fire, by the way, is crackling and burning with an evoke potential of 10 hertz. 10 hertz happens to be alpha. Alpha happens to tell, the brain tells the gut to produce acetylcholine. This is what makes you feel good. So at night, if you just went from watching the news to bed, that's a very hard jump for the for the for the body. So we need to have a way to come down to relax the body. So we do that through our environment. Now we can't take them to a mountaintop, but we can put light, sound, and vibration on their head, and their brain believes they are in the same energy field. Like for instance, if you and I were on a in a spaceship flying toward Earth, and we were to measure the evoked potential of the planet, it would go between 0 0.05 and 100. These are frequencies. These are called earth frequencies. Our brain is used to them all the time. That's why, I don't know if you remember or saw when they had the tsunami, they asked, why aren't there any animals that got killed? The animals were gone because the animals are in tune with our environment. They knew the tsunami was coming. People were so blindsided, they were even running out after the wave. You know, so it's like we're we're meant to be in tune. We're not just on the planet. We're part of the planet, you know. And when we're living, like a lot of people like Clint Oprah who talks about earthing and things like that, we need the planet and the planet needs us. We need the planet more than it needs us. But we're we're basically a lot of people are just so out of tune. So they they live in a home that is ungrounded, that doesn't have uh, the right if you want to call it feng shui or whatever you want to call it, where they don't have the right energy in their house, you know, you, it's chaotic and stressing. And then they go to sleep. And they wonder why they're not sleeping. There's a whole protocol for that, right? You have to calm yourself down. But once you learn, and one of the, when I was saying earlier, if you don't have the brain tap, one of the best things you can do before sleep is practice four, eight breath, which means you, you lay down in your bed right before sleep, you breathe into the metal count of four and you breathe out to the count of eight. Because this exercises your nervous system. When you breathe in, you're actually triggering your sympathetic system. And when you breathe out, you're triggering your parasympathetic. What will happen eventually by doing that breath is there'll be no more stress in your body. It will be unraveled. So many people go to sleep and they think you're supposed to just close your eyes and go to some never, never land. That's not appropriate sleep. You should have a 10 to 15 minute ritual when you get into bed, that unwinds the stress of the day. So what I teach people to do, and, and I'm sure if you've listened to the brain tap, you've heard it on there. I encourage people to review their day and anything that was done well to relive it because we need to refresh the most positive memories of our life so we don't lose them. And anything that was negative that happened during the day, how could you reframe that and learn from it? You know, the old saying, those who fail to learn from the past are doomed to relive it. And most people are living the same day, 365 days of the year. They don't have 365 days. They have the same day that they live every day and they just chase their tail all day long. 
And But if we start to organize our day in a way that says, how am I bringing value to this day? How am I bringing meaning to my life? How is my life having a purpose? And the main way to do that is if you're going through struggles right now, everybody goes through struggles. But the reality is that this is the time. Sleep is the incubator for your superpowers. If you do not get into a right sleep state, then you cannot engage the most powerful computer on earth, the human brain. It's capable of dispensing 30,000 different neurochemicals. So we need to engage that part of the brain. I think we need to pause because you said a mountain of gold that I think we need to sort of distill out because there was a lot in that. So the first thing I think we really need to make sure the listeners take is sympathetic. Fight, flight, or freeze keeps you alive. You need it. However, if you're looking for rest, restoration, digestion, relaxation, that's parasympathetic. And when you breathe in, you activate sympathetic. When you breathe out, you activate parasympathetic. So step one, breathe out longer than in, and in a systematic fashion, tip the scales towards parasympathetic, especially when you're trying to go to sleep. That's one thing that we want to go over. Two, do not watch TV at night and then expect to go right to bed. That's bad for you. You didn't talk about blue lock blocking glasses. I'd love to touch on that. And it sounds like you're recommending that it's not just stop, change, do something else. It's stop, decompress, go to sleep. Exactly. Did I get all that? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Talk to me about blue light blocking glasses. What is your opinion on those? Well, 20% of the world probably needs to wear those. And usually they're the people that have blue or green eyes because they take in more light. Brown eyed people do not take in as, as much light. There's If you're selling blue light glasses, then you're going to say a lot of weird things about it. The, the dirty blue light is four, uh, 456 and lower. The That's why we chose 470 nanometer light. It's actually healing light. We've had two different university graduate students do their PhDs on brain tap and macular degeneration. And we actually lowered the pressure in the eyes and actually help people. So blue light in general is not bad. We need blue light. If you don't have blue light, you're not going to make melatonin. So the, you need it. It doesn't rob your body of melatonin. That's, a, that's not true at all. But if you, if you do a study with people who have problems with blue light, so I have them that I wear with my computer because your computer is throwing off dirty light. When you're like, uh, for instance, uh, if I'm looking at a computer screen, there's a million LEDs. They're not tuned LEDs. They're basically making the best color, you know, and it's fantastic. I mean, we can look, watch a movie, but our brain, more than the blue light, blue light is important, but what's more important is, have you ever seen Rain Man, the movie, when they drop the, they drop the toothpicks and he says 1,143 or whatever. And believe it or not, we can all do that. We just don't because it's not meaningful. Why would we do that? But we have the capacity to do that. But our brain is actually predicting. Our brain is a prediction. It has a prediction algorithm. So when we're making up this reality, 80% as neuroscientists tell us, we're looking at a computer screen. There's a million probabilities of red, green, and blue of every one of those LEDs. Your brain is trying to figure it out every time that you look at your phone, every time you look at your screen. It's more the mathematical equation of just what's happening. You're, when we look at our world, it's moving much slower than a computer screen. That computer screen is basically sending signals to our brain. And it, it's the color is important, but it's not that important. I mean, we could, we could take, like I said, 80% of the people, they could be in wide open, lights on, sleep all night, still have a good sleep score. 20% of the people, they have a red light blinking in the corner of the room and that's bothering their sleep. And the reason for that is every one of our cells, this is something that blows people away. And I'm going to tell you three things. Every one of our cells has chromoforms in it. A chromoform is a battery, really. That, think of it like a battery and it's absorbing light energy. Without that, you would die. So you don't get all of your nutrition from food or water. You get it from the environment, from the light. We are light beings. Uh, the other thing is that we all emit every living thing, everything we see, hear, and experience in our known universe emits 8, 10 nanometer light. You are a light generator. And Tom Brady, which most people know, the quarterback for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, 
Our science officer, Francisco Sidral, actually owns the patent to his clothing. It's called TB12, but he sells it through other means by, they just call it recovery wear. Because this clothing that he designed has ceramics in it that reflect back your own body's natural light and heal you. So this is going to become more and more important because the third thing I want to tell you is you are not the same person. Every 40 seconds, you are 100%. I'm saying 100% different because every gene pair through something called biophotaic exchange is changing your gene expression so that you either show up as your best self or you show up as a compromised self because the genes are changing based on an infinite number we don't even know how many parameters but light is what's doing that and it does it through the fascia and through the dura those think of it like fiber optics it's teaching your body so we need light energy so it's in, it's crazy for me. Now, if you're one of those 20% of the people, there's also 20% of the people that can't walk by a, a EMF tower. You know, these towers, these cell towers. I know a doctor that all you have to do is turn on your cell phone and he'll pass out because his body is so sensitive. You know, it's just like the X-Men, you know, you see these guys, some people just have these super sensory you know, what's going on with that? So, you know, it, it's just like every every superhero has their kryptonite, you know, and you have to figure out what your kryptonite is and then you work on that. So if you have a problem with blue light, your kryptonite's blue light, then use these blue blocking glasses. I have a pair. I don't have a problem with it, but because I'm on the computer so much, usually somewhere around five o'clock at night, I will take out the glasses that have, and I have very light yellow glasses. I don't have the really dark red ones that you can use. Find the one that's because of what I found when I use those, I got super tired. That's because your brain, your brain has the most mitochondria, but your eyes have 300 times more mitochondria through than any other area of your body. So it's all compressed. So mitochondria, they know that your the mitochondria in the eye not only absorbs light, but transmits light. So when you're looking at somebody and you somebody's staring at you and you go, you turn around, you notice they're staring at you. That's because you're super sensitive and you can actually feel their light hitting you. This, These are some spooky things that are now, I mean, it used to be when I was growing up in the seventies and my dad was doing Silva, people would say, I'm light, you know, and they'd be all metaphysical. We used to call them metaphysicalers, you know, and we'd think, oh, that's crazy. But now science has proven we are light. We are light beings. So what do we need to do to get our light and if we can share our light with the world, you know, there are people that when we they walk in the room, it becomes brighter. There are people that walk in the room and it gets dimmer because they're they're energy vampires. You know, they, they they're so we have to really manage who we spend time with, who we communicate with. But that's all about being sensitive. It's not that everybody's bad or everybody's good. It's just we you know, the old saying birds of a feather flock together. We need to find people as you open yourself up to these realities that we're not just these things that eat and poop and live and die and, you know, all these things, then we start to realize that we are a community, just like the cells in our body are a community. We're a community, right? And we have to figure out how to live together in a way that's in harmony. It has nothing to do with color. It has nothing to do with where you were brought up. It has everything to do with we're part of this human race that's evolving before our eyes. We're going to be very different 20 years from now than we are today. Because of science. Science is proving some things that we thought were not possible, but they are possible. All right. So I wow. Let's pause there for a second. <laughs> and so why I don't like malls, just for the record. I never go to mall. I don't like the energy in malls. I don't like how I feel after the energy in malls. So you've just justified never going to the mall again, just for the record. Just don't want to go you to can go with the teenagers. Be go with the teenagers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's very so, true. I mean. Yeah. So here's the, I guess, I've, no, where do I go? So the, so you're saying everything you've said, I just really want to confirm everything you said is in a peer reviewed scientific study that you can show in whatever else. Because the 99.999% of us haven't heard about it. Uh, I, I'm in the earthy crunchy camp, so I, I get that, but it's, I did not realize it's actually in the scientific literature. Yeah, just, just do a search by biophotaic exchange and you'll see all the research being done. 
you know, with lasers and LEDs and light therapy, we're finding out so much. I mean, uh, my brother-in-law, who's a maxillofacial surgeon, you know, he used to think lasers are just for, you know, using in surgery and things like that. But the reality is now we have lasers that heal. We have uh, light that can even change frequencies of the brain, like the shed light laser. We can use that and we can, if we need alpha in a certain region of the brain, we can use that laser to do it. Uh, we can change frequencies with light. Yeah. Biophotaic exchange is the one. When I learned about it four years ago, when I was interviewing Dave Asprey, for my brain summit, I went, what's this? I was one of those 99.9 that never heard of it. I said, I got to research this. And then when I talked to our science officer, he goes, oh yeah, that's why I did. I'm going, well, why did you tell me about it? You know, it's like, but you sound like a crazy man when you're talking about this. But now when science starts talking about it and, you know, in 2003, when they mapped the human genome, everybody celebrated. But the reality is they only map 1%. Could you imagine graduating from college and I fill out 1% of the answers I should graduate? No, that's not going to happen. That's because they didn't have the technology until 2018. That's when they found out about this biophotaic exchange. And they realized that these gene expressions, the reason they called them, quote, junk, was they didn't know how quickly they were changing. Just like the glial-lymphomic system, they had, can you imagine our medical science discovered that in 2015 that didn't mean it didn't exist before 2015 it just means they just discovered it so what else about us do we not know we do know we also know like we took to dr oz we we met a group that does heart rate variability with cameras for babies for infants for to help um crib you know the infant death syndrome and we went to him because he had a friend that was running these elderly these assisted living facilities and we wanted to show him how in the dark we could tell them where the people were because you can measure heart rate variability from 18 feet away. Interesting. You have a field of energy that's magnetic in nature that can now be recorded from 18 feet away. Is that heart math or is that another group? It's another group, but heart math was definitely the motivator. I mean, they did so much. Now what happens is once somebody you know, goes to the jungle and makes a trail, you know, then they put a highway in. So now the, the medical community is, is doing that. So we, we are more than we were told. Yeah, no, that's, yeah. that's for certain. So I want to, I want to make sure, cause uh, just to honor everybody's time, I want to make sure to, cause I want, I want to know myself, how, how does this work? Tell me. <laughs> okay. All right. Because so it has start, all these. Let's start with the ear 20 lights. of them. Uh, so we have. So go, the, ahead and turn, go ahead and turn it on. So when you see those lights, there's those are, that's 650 and 470 nanometer light. And wait, the pause, reason. Wait, Patrick, sorry, pause. I'm wearing contacts. Do I have to take out my contacts to wear it, to try it? No. I'm not no, doing because, it on air, but like, I'm just curious. Yeah. No, because your eyes are closed. There's something called biophotaic exchange. So when you talk about photobiomodulation, so Dr. Sidral, who's our science officer again, he wrote the book on bio on biophotaic exchange with uh I'm sorry, photaic uh, by where with how the body takes in light and exchanges it with other cells. So think of it like when a cell fills up with energy, our cells communicate to the other cells. So I have a lot of energy. Do you need some? It starts sharing. It. So what's happening with, you don't, you're not going to see, it doesn't work with your optic nerve. It works it, it, like the way we see, it works with the optic nerve just by flashing. Okay. It's the flash that does it. So okay. So let's go back the, to the machine. Sorry. I didn't mean to send yeah, us off on a yeah. tangent, but I was just curious. Yeah. You have to take out your contacts, but apparently yeah. you don't. So, okay. You can pick no, your thing up again and we, no, learn it. Yeah. yeah. We have some people that actually use those yellow glasses at night while they're doing the brain tap so they don't have the blue light because it affects them the uh so what's happening is number one the ear lights i want to talk about that because nobody does that and we have the uh, we have the patent pending on how we're using it we use seven different nose ear frequencies these are frequencies like think of it like musical tones in the body if all these seven frequencies are in tune your body's healthy so every two minutes that's the vibratory frequency we're triggering the vagus nerve so while you have it on, we're we're broadcasting. Now, the reason we have nine lights in each ear and it's a 10 to 20 minute dose is a 20 minute dose happens to be like a two minute dose of laser, but nobody has to stand there and do it. And in there's junctions in the ear that are meridian points, which means think of it like energy highways throughout the body. And acupuncturists have been using this for 10,000 years. So what we're doing is we're going to open up those meridians by running energy 
And the body, if they're, if your ears get warm using brain tap, you have blockages. But as soon as the blockages go away, your ears will never get warm. You have right. blockages? Your ears oh, get my warm. ears get warm, so apparently. I yeah, you were what perfect. will happen here, in, 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 if you listened a little bit more often, like every day for a week, it probably would stop. But okay. what's happening, because you're doing, every 72 hours, your nervous system is going to try to return back to whatever it thinks is neurological norm for you. It might not be normal, but it, it's for you. Yeah, well, so, what do you mean? <laughs> right, yeah. So the ear lights are designed to turn off that sympathetic drive and turn on parasympathetic. And without your awareness, every session has that. Then we look at the eye lights. One, one thing is, like I said earlier, the eyes are not just attached to the brain. The eyes are brain matter. So they're absorbing light. And it's a very specific frequency, not just the 470 nanometer, but it's, it's actually changing its frequency. And it's balancing the right left hemisphere. They're just off center. Even though sometimes it, they appear to be flashing at the same rate, they're not. They never are. Every three minutes, at least, something's changing because the brain wants that change. If not, it'll just treat it like wallpaper. It won't, it won't get the same response. Then what we do is we go into the sound part of it. Binaural beats work because, uh, and this is something that's been around since 1800, so it's not like that's not new. But what they found out with sound was if I put a 200 hertz frequency in one ear and a 210 hertz frequency in the other, the brain doesn't hear either of those 200 or 210. It hears the 10 hertz. They call it a phantom sound. The most bizarre part of this is that's what we're doing all the time. So that's kind of spooky. We're always doing that. But the problem is that most things are mono. So what we do then is we have an isochronic tone, which is a mono frequency. So you don't need to be wearing the earphones to get that result. But we did that because not everybody has perfect hearing. So we kind of measure that. It's kind of like going to the symphony and you don't just have a violin, you have the whole string section. You know, we want to have as many as possible. Then we add on top of that music. Music is important and it's been well-researched. Uh, there's something called the Mozart effect which they proved in, in science that if I play Baroque classical music in a, in a classroom, the students are smarter. We didn't teach them anything new. We didn't do anything different. The only thing we did was turn on music. That's because the brain synchronizes. They call it 10 hertz music. So we use that music in the background just to synchronize the brain. We have a lot of sessions with just the algorithm and the music like that. So, But then if you go to the next step, which is the audio message, most people communicate to themselves over, they say, about 80,000 thoughts a day. And unfortunately, 80% of them are negative. And that's just part of our biological upbringing, you know, that we survived. You're the genetic heroes of your, of your race because somebody else got ate by the saber-toothed tiger. Your, your genetics didn't. So what we did with the words, we know that words change 2,300 gene expressions. So if you're going to change your genes, one of the best ways is to change your language. Change the way you're communicating with yourself. I love uh, telling people, I said, if you actually spoke to other people the way you speak to yourself, you probably wouldn't have any friends. You know, so we need to be more loving, more appreciative and honoring. So all those together. And then what we do, every series. So let's say you wanted to better your golf game. Every one of those sessions in that series is different. There's not one of our 2000 sessions that are the same because the brain if we did them all the same, the brain would say, oh, I get it. And then it doesn't, it won't pay attention anymore. But we need to get the brain to pay attention and have a cortical response or a deep, a, that primitive brain needs to respond. Because that's the part of the brain that gets hijacked, the amygdala. You know, so when, when it gets hijacked and you have that neuropronephrine release and you have adrenaline and cortisol, and then pretty soon you're going, who was that person that got all angry? That wasn't me. You know, but it was because your emotions got hijacked because of the um, what happened to the brain. Right. You know. So, okay. So how long? How many? So I have two questions. I'm assuming you've compared this to meditation, right? Yeah, we even in India, I and mean, we've had gurus on the device. We actually improve gurus' brain function. So okay. how I'm many? How, oh wait, 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 wait! Hold on, don't go. Wait, sorry. I just want to stay on this for one second because. If people are already meditating and they start the brain tap, it sounds, how many times do they need to do it before they see a difference? And then people who aren't meditating who start the brain tap, when do people start to notice an impact? 
90% of people will notice an impact that night. Their sleep will be deeper, especially if they have a digital device or something that can measure sleep. Uh, but we've measured about 300. You, about you just 30. sold one. They just say that. You sold me for him because he likes to get up at three in the morning and wander around. And I'm like, go back to bed. It's not time to get up. But I'm, so, I'm, but I'm thinking for myself, too. And all the kids, our oldest, we have a whole bunch of kids. We have like a soccer team worth of kids. So I'm like, well, all of them could take it. So, okay. So the same night, but then lasting change. I'm assuming you need to keep doing it. Well, there's one study we did with concussions because we wanted to see what would happen with one year after treatment. These were people that did not own the devices. It was a school in Gaylord, Michigan. Dr. Arkfeld did the study and we're presenting this to NIH this year because it was so profound. What we did is every person in the school that had a concussion that year all got treatment. So nobody missed out on the medical protocols that they needed. But 50% of them were given the brain tap at the end. The others didn't. One year later, we went back into the neurological test. Every neurological function was improved by a minimum of 30% to a maximum of 70% on the group that used brain tap. One year later. How so long did they use it in the study? How, how many? How they, only did it during, they only did it during their therapy, which was three times a week. For three months? Month, three, like, until they were returned to play. So if you had a concussion and you returned to play in two months, that's how long you did the therapy. Then a year after they returned to play, that's when we did this, the review. So everyone's different in recovery. So we had a sleep study we did with coal miners in Western Australia. These are people that never see the light of day. You talk about a circadian rhythm being off. They go to work in the dark. They work in the dark. They leave in the dark. They allowed us to put our chairs in their entry to the mine. And we had a, a one of our PhD students was there running the study. That group, we did a washout of two weeks. They already, we improved when they used the headset, they got a 70% improvement in three weeks in their sleep scores. And we used something called the bio strap to measure those. And then the uh, the group that didn't use the headset, but only used the app, it took them six weeks to get that same result. When we did the washout period, which was two weeks, both groups improved 4% doing nothing. Once your brain learns, it's like learning mathematics. Once you learn it, you don't have to go back to your teacher. Now, if you, over a long period of time, I believe, went back to the old behaviors and eating and doing those things, I'm sure it would return back or it would just atrophy again. But the 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 thing is, it's like muscles. You know, muscles are going to atrophy if you don't use them. Neurology, it's called neural pruning for those that, that don't know it. When, we, when we're born, those children you have, when they were first born, they were fully wired. Every neuron connection was made. As they age, it unplugs. This is a part of our brain's function. So what's happening in the world today is people are living longer and they're realizing that their brain learned a process of neural pruning, but we need to teach it to stop doing that. Because we, after a certain point, we don't need neural pruning anymore. We need, we need neural stability. We need to remember those pathways. Yes. Yes. Who should yes. not yes. use, who should not use this? Are there any people you would say, okay, with this medical condition, stay away from it. I'm thinking of a patient who has vertigo, who I'm, I'm thinking this might be good for her, actually. Vertigo works really well with this. We just start with low-level light. Uh, we, we have results. I mean, we have 3,000 clinics using it. So we get a lot of feedback on vertigo, and they get really good results. But the one group that shouldn't use the lights, they can, they can use the lights in the ears, but they shouldn't use the visor lights. Are, uh, for, the, yes, they're epileptics with light epilepsy. There's a photaic epileptics. It's about a 10% of the epileptics. But because we can't test them for that, we just don't allow ep ep epileptics to use the visor. This is very cool, Patrick. Now I'm like... Now you're... Now you're yeah, at first I was like, oh, what did he bring home? You know, <laughs> he brings stuff home a lot, yeah. shall we say. I know my wife goes through that. She goes, oh, no, he's at a conference. What's he bringing back? You know, and then the staff's going, what are we going to have to change when he gets back from this conference? You know, that's typically what happens. <laughs> no, but this sounds really cool. Um, and I just, I think it sounds. So really have you done, so we're, I, so this is obviously, it's all personal. It's, cause it's, it's always personal. Have you done actually any studies with, because um, we, we're going to look, we're going to be starting to have patients wear this. Um, when they do their IVs, so they get even better response. Have you had any studies or antidotal 
studies about we, that? We do, we do have a study that um, a group out of uh, Provo, Utah did. They did an amino acid for the brain. And unfortunately, they got bought out by another group. They're rolling up these DO clinics. And we didn't get the research from the guy, and he's not there anymore. So we're, we're doing it again. But what they told us was when they used brain tap during the IV, they got 30% more absorption. And it makes sense because if you're, they've done studies with prayer when you're before you eat or just eating in a family environment rather than in front of the TV and how much more you're, we did that. That study was done against them looking at their cell phones. So when you think of, we know that when you look at your cell phone, every ding, you have a response. We actually did a research where we put the phone in the other room. They couldn't even hear it. But every time they got a ding or a notification, their brain, there was a quantum entanglement between their brain and their phone. Uh, that's so right. You know, and it, so stop saying that because <laughs> I'm getting depressed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the, the that's why I tell people I I only answer my usually I answer my text in that only during certain times during the day do I have it on, and they know about it. But I have an assistant that answers when I'm not, you know, on it because if I didn't, I'd be looking at my phone. I, I'd be getting you know dings all the time, and that's not good for us. You know, it's kind of like when somebody's creative and they're in this creative mood and then somebody comes in and says, hey, mom, hi, dad. And you're, you go, oh, just give me a minute. You know, you, you've got to have that focus. And so the, those those intense periods of focus, I think you should put your smartphone aside unless you're using it as part of that focus because you don't, it, it will distract you. Yeah. All right. So here's here's the challenge. We're, 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 we've scratched the surface. We've scratched the surface. You've got huge amount of information yeah we we love the product that you've built now i'm gonna go try it by the way <laughs> uh, uh, that that was worth that just that conversation <laughs> but and we want to honor everybody's time so i think we, we well, need to where wrap can people up for, find you yeah where where can people find you that's a really good question well you should share your link with them you should have a link to share out the uh, the free gift in the in the book. If not, they can just go to braintap.com, check us out, tell us they heard about it on this podcast. And um, from there, they can learn about it. They can also go to at braintap tech on any social media site. Uh, you know, we're gonna be there or at dr patrick porter at dr patrick porter. I have a lot of little videos that they're doing. They're cutting up a lot of my talks into these little you know, they say we have the attention span of a goldfish now, so they're making less, these little reels. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so, you know, the, and these reels are getting like 10, 15,000 views, and it's like crazy. They're only like 10 seconds, but they're they're getting the little sound bites and they're putting them out. And so, and there's there's some there's some full talks, you know, that, that people have put out on YouTube and things if they if they search by my name. Okay, awesome. cool. Uh, say, Patrick, Dr. Porter. Not just, I didn't say your PhD at the end. So first off, thank you for being here. Second off, thank you, because this is amazing and super cool. And I know I can't wait to try it. And um, and third off, thank you for joining us on this episode of the Five Journeys podcast, Live Like You Matter. And I, I'm sure people are going to be looking you up. So thank you. That's great. Well, thanks for having me. I'm on a mission to better a billion brains. And, you know, whoever's listening, it's your brain right now. So let's see if we can upgrade you. Do the Get out there and get the free free time and see what we can do. This has been great. Thank you. All right. Thank you.